praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Listen to me. The last verse in the book of Psalms. The last, the very last verse in the book of Psalms. It says, let everything that hath bread praise the Lord. And I was so blessed this morning when I came here and I saw that passage from the book of Revelation. It says that the four and twenty elders and the four beasts, they bow down and they cry, holy, 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 day and night. They worship and they praise God. And that is my message this morning. I want to say to you today, someone, Jehoshaphat in the book of Chronicles, was faced with a great army, a multitude that he and Israel could not defeat. And he went before the Lord and he cried unto the Lord and he stood up and he reminded God of certain things. He said, God, you are not the one who gave us the power to chase these people out of this land. And Jehoshaphat was confused. He was confronted and he began to cry out unto God. And the word of the Lord came to a prophet by the name of Jehazi. And he said, listen to me, tomorrow you will have no need to fight this battle. There is no need to fight this battle. For the Lord will fight for you. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want you to know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Word of God says that all good gifts and all perfect gifts come down from above the Father of life. And there is no shadow of turning with Him. In other words, God cannot change. And listen to me, I'm going to say that God cannot get better neither God cannot get worse but God is constant he cannot change he will not change and he will not lie hallelujah and the spirit of, lo of the Lord listen to me it is one spirit it is one spirit when I came here and I heard Brother Bibi reading that passage, I have it here, I have it written down here. My message is all about praising God and loosening our chains. Because you see, some of us have some chains, not physical chains, but there are some chains in our life that we need to free ourselves of. Chains of relationships, chains of Chains of health issues. Chains on the job. There, there are people that are fighting us down. You know, there are so many things. Issues. Chains in the church, in the body of Christ. Chains that we must rid ourselves of. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father and God, I worship you this morning because... That is all you desire for your people is to praise and to worship, oh God. When the praises go up, the blessings will come down. God, I pray that we as a people, we would understand what it means to worship you. Not just when we come together as a congregation. Not just this gathering, oh God. But even knowing at our own time that we will take time out to praise you, to worship you, oh God. To praise you, you said that is why we were created for your own good pleasure. Help us to understand that you are the God of all knowledge and wisdom for your word declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 33 oh the depth of the riches of your wisdom and knowledge of our great God and I want how unsearchable are your ways hallelujah 
How unsearchable are you, O oh God, and your ways are past finding out. So, Father, we bless you this morning and we worship you in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Have your way. Minister to your people, O oh God. Minister to me. As we, O oh God, assemble here, not only the canopy of this building, but under the canopy of heaven, O oh God, let our praise and our worship be accepted by you, O oh God. You said, O oh God, hallelujah, you desire, you desire truth from the inward parts, O oh God. You do, you do not desire people who would worship you with their lips, but their hearts are far from you. But God, you desire truth from the inward man. So Lord, just have your way, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me welcome each and every one, those of us, those of you who are visiting us. Um, let me just extend a warm welcome to you. Our past is not here. But I want you to know that we are always glad to have you here at the temple. As a matter of fact, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Listen to me. These are not the days to be fooling around. I speak to the unconverted and even to the converted. Those of us who might not be where the place that we should really be. Who might be taking chances. This is not the time to be taking chances. For the kingdom of God is at hand. We are seeing the fulfillment of scripture every single day. So I speak to the unconverted. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. There is safety. Not in a church. Not in a building. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For there is no other name. Given among men under heaven. Whereby he must be saved. But the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our hiding place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. This morning, for a brief moment, because I realized that there would still be a number of things, preliminary things before the war that would have been done, so I cannot just take up all that time. But for a short moment, I want to encourage us and show us the importance of why we must learn to praise God. Some of us are introverts and we don't speak much. But listen to me. God does not, it does not, you cannot tell God I don't speak much. So I can't praise much. God is to be praised and to be worshipped. In the book of Acts chapter 16, it says that Paul and Silas, because they were preaching, and they were preaching about Jesus Christ, that some religious people call The scribe 
and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were mad and they were angry. And they had Paul and Silas arrested. But not only arrested, they were beaten. And they were thrown in jail. In the book of Acts chapter 16, two verses, 25 and 26. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Listen to me. People ought to hear your praise. Don't tell me that you're praising God in your heart. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all these saints. People ought to hear your praise. Let your praise be heard. Don't be afraid to sing the praises that is due unto God. I don't care where you are. But you see, sometimes the problem with some of us is that we have already given the people around us the wrong message. That now we cannot open our mouth to praise. We are not free in our praise. Listen to me. It pays to live good. It pays to live right. It pays to live according to the word of God. That nothing will hinder your praise. That when you say hallelujah Jesus I bless your name. Nobody will have to look at you like. A, cons a consistent life must be maintained at all time. Verse 26. And suddenly there was a great multitude so that the foundations of the earth, sorry, the foundations of the prison was shaken. There was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Wow. What an earthquake. Just an earthquake that will open prisoners and loose bands, chains. Because what? Of the praises. The praising. What it is to praise. What does it mean to praise? Listen to me. I tell you this. To praise is to boast. When you begin to praise people for their efforts, you begin to boast about them. You begin to rave about them. You begin to commend them. To speak well of. To Lord. And praising God is an act of exalting his great name. For the name of the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord, all his saints. There are a few Hebrew words. I'm not going to go into them. But I want you to know the original meaning of praise. Because you see, there are all different forms of praise. Eh? To halal is to celebrate. 
to be clamorously foolish. So when we see brother precisely on the ground and jumping up and rolling, he is halaling the Lord. He is behaving clamorously foolish. But not foolish for man. We may look up on it and be with disdain and scorn. But listen to me. In the eyes of God, God is well pleased by the worship. Even when we be here, it tells us that we are willing to put our pride aside. Our human pride aside. We are willing to put that aside. For the Lord. Listen to me. And why must not God be praised? Why not? Let's think about it. Who is God to you? What does he mean to you? Then we can yada the Lord. When we throw our hands up. We revere him in worship. We to heal him. We give him praise and laudation. When we zammer the Lord. The musicians were zammering the Lord this morning. Because they were on their instrument. So they were playing praises unto God. It is a matter of string than playing instruments unto the Lord. When we barack the Lord, we kneel down, we salute him. When we shabak, we shout with a loud voice. When we shabak him and when we toad him, we just go like this posture. In adoration. So listen to me. The Hebrew text. The original Hebrew text. Use some strong words. When we begin to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Involves the work of the whole man. We must learn. To praise the Lord with our whole man. Our instruments, our hands, our feet, our voices. We can jump, we can shout, we can roll. For God is to be praised. Listen to me. The scripture says. And if there are those who still think that I cannot do that. I don't think I can do that. The word of God says that praises is comely. Praises is comely. It is the right thing to do for the upright. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to him you see some of the foolishness we spend speaking sometimes the gossip and the time we spend talking foolish and nonsense and things that don't edify listen to me God says let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. That is what? That is the fruit our lips should be producing. Praise and worship. But in some of us, we, our lips are producing some rotten fruits. That they are not good. They are not good. So all believers... And I'm not speaking, I'm, I'm not speaking, most of the times we think we only praise when we come in an organized setting. 
No, listen to me. Praise is a lifestyle. Praise should become a lifestyle. It is, we should become natural to us. We drive in, we should be praising. We walk in, we should be praising. We sit in our desk, we should be praising. We're lying on our bed, we should be praising. We're bathing in our bathroom, we should be praising God. The four beasts, they cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty day and night. The four and twenty elders, they bow down and they worship God around his throne. If we want to see the manifestation of God in our lives, let us develop and begin to worship and praise him like never before. Let us come out of our comfort zone. Some of us are just comfortable. We are just comfortable. I'm quiet and I'm easy going. And people don't hear my voice much. They don't hear me. I don't shout. I Listen to me. Let us start behaving clamorously foolish for the Lord. So all believers without exception should take and make it a practice of taking the time to honor and adore him. Prayer should not only be when we seek to be received, when we seek to receive anything of God, but it should be spontaneous. It should be whenever we feel like in the good times and in the bad times, we must give God praise. Because God is God alone. In the good times and the bad, he is still on the throne. God is sovereign. Listen to me. Sometimes we think that we owe God something. Or God owes us something. And if we don't praise God, listen to me, Jesus said, if you shut up these people's mouth, God will raise up the rocks and the stones to praise him. I don't want a stone to take my place. I don't want a rock to cry out for me. Because I tell you, I want to be in the presence of the Lord one day. When I can bow down and I can worship him. I can bless his name. You see some. We are limited by this earthly vessel. We get tired. We get weary. But I believe when God gives us that heavenly body. That we can worship God day and night. Without ever getting tired. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me, no other being is more deserving. No other being, no president, no prime minister, no emperor, no queen, no king, no dignitary, no diplomat. Think about it, no boss, no husband, no wife. No child. No mother, no father. No other being is more deserving of praise than God. Think about it. Can you live without him? Can you live without this God? He possesses all wisdom. And our knowledge. But what has happened to us. Is like all relationships. Like in all relationships. We take them for granted. 
We take our spouses for granted. We take our children for granted. Our children take their, ch children take their parents for granted. So God just becomes another person that we just check in. We know he's there. He's there. So we're not going to spend all our times adoring and worshiping. A lot of us are guilty of this. When we were dating, husbands and wives, there would be all sorts of expressions of adoration. adoration. And we would love to speak glowing things. The, war, the, 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 the phrase, I love you, was nothing, not difficult at all to come out of our mouths. But then we get what we desire. We get married and we live together for years and then that person becomes that person. We become familiar with them. And I'm speaking to myself here. Because sometimes we don't know <laughs> during the course of the day just to send a text message. Just to say I love you and I'm thinking about you. And that is our lives with God so many times. We wake up in the morning. We just say, morning, God. We go about our day. We do not know just to take this little time out to say, Lord, I bless you. I praise you. I worship you. I don't really need anything. But just the fact, listen to me. Just the fact that I'm alive. Just the fact that I'm in my right mind. The fact that I have a home to go to. I have a bed to sleep on. I have a job. It's not much, but it keep, it's keeping bread on the table. God, this is enough to praise you for. But some of us find it hard because we don't see these Simple things. We see them as ordinary, everyday things. Listen to me. That is the goodness of God. So we must not become used to God and take him for granted as we have, you know. We have been to each other in our relationships. We think of when somebody gives us a gift. How polite we are. We give them so much thanks. We, pra we praise them. Listen to me. God has given us, each and every one of us, as long as we are still here today. He has given us a gift every day. He has given us the gift of life when we open our eyes. And we can look up and we can see that we can walk. We can go. We can brush our teeth. We can bathe. We can put on our clothes. We can head out of the house. And then we can return home. But we have become so accustomed to the habit of routine that we, thinks, that we think it's just natural. God is giving us a gift every day, every morning. I do not know about you, but I wake up with God on my mind. I don't know about you, but there's never a morning that I wake up and God is not on my mind. Yes, 
Some of us wake up with the thoughts of yesterday. I try, I don't, I try not to live in the past and to dwell in the past. But I look towards the future. I forget those things that are behind. And I press towards the mark of the high calling of God. You see, God is calling us every day to a higher calling. A higher calling. And listen to me. The gifts and calling of God is without repentance. God will continue to call you. Even though you have not come into that purpose, he is still calling you. Maybe I'm speaking to someone here this morning who might have been in the house of the Lord but left. But you are here this morning. The gifts and the call of God is without repentance. When God is calling, he continues to call. But listen to me. I want you to know that there's another verse that says, He that have been often reproved and hardened his heart and stiffened his neck shall be suddenly cut off and without remedy. Listen to me. Saints of God. The mission of the church is to prepare the saints for the coming of the Lord. It is to evangelize and make disciples of men. But it is also to equip the saints of God. You see, the church is like a school. It should teach you how you are to live. The Bible says that the pastor is the shepherd of our souls. A shepherd guides the sheep. And I want to admonish every one of us. Let us not be messing around with sin. You see, in a lot of churches, we have become, it has become a taboo. Or people think that you would offend, you would offend others if you preach about sin. Listen to me. Sin will continue to be a problem until the end of this world. And the people of God must know that they must live above sin. And the mission of the church is to what? Destroy Jesus came that he may destroy the works of the devil. So Psalms 22 and verse 3. God inhabits the praises of his people. And that is a wonderful imagery. Isaiah said, and you heard Brother Bibi say it. In the year that King Josiah died, he saw the Lord. High and lifted up. Oh, and his chain filled the temple. That is the imagery that we must have in our heart when we say that God inhabits the praises of his people. It's as if God is sitting on his throne and God dwells within the midst of his people. As the people sing songs of worship and adoration. Psalms 33 verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. For praise is comely to the upright. So when, when we see the saints of God praising the Lord. It is the right thing. We know that it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Let us praise the Lord. For there are so many blessings of praising God. The outcome. The outcomes of praise and worship. 
Listen to me. When we begin to praise God, we experience God on a different level. When we begin to praise God, you see, it's like praise is the key to open the door to the levels of God. When we begin to praise God, we can experience God like we have never experienced him before. I know there are people that have had experiences with God all because what? They have learned how to praise him. When we begin to praise God, our personal desires are fulfilled. There is answered prayers. I said earlier, when Jehoshaphat came up against the Moabites, a great multitude, he said, my God, this is a great army. We stand no chance against them. It's not that Jehoshaphat did not have faith, but sometimes we have to take in consideration the reality of the situation. But guess what? He went to the Lord God. The, uh, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of many armies. And it is said when the word of God came to the prophet Jehazel. That on the morning when the morning broke. Jehoshaphat set the singers and the worshippers. He put them in the front. Remember the prophet had told them. Listen to me. Tomorrow you will not even have to lift the sword. You will have no need to fight. Am I here to say to, to some of us today? The battles that we are facing. When we begin to praise the Lord. The people that are giving us a difficult time. Whether it's on the job. In our neighborhood. Listen to me. Don't trade words with them. Trade your words with God. Don't trade words with them. Don't get into the gutters with them. Don't have anything to say with them. Have a conversation with God. Have a conversation with God. And you will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes it is the very enemies that will turn on each other. You will have no need to fight. So when Jehoshaphat set the singers and the worshippers at the front of the battle, they began, oh my goodness. The Israelites marched around Jericho for six days. On the seventh day, they marched seven times. And they raised a Shabbat unto the Lord. They Shabbat the Lord. And the walls of Jericho came falling down. They did not have to get into a physical confrontation. The walls will come tumbling down. You just begin praising God. You just begin praising God. And walking in the ways of God. And you will see your Jericho walls fall. So we experience 
victories. Victories in the battles we are facing. We see and experience the presence of God. The favor of God. Listen to me. And your enemies can't stand when God favors you. Eh? It eats them up. They cannot stand when God favors you. And when God favors you, when God favors you, I am telling you, even the unbelieving will see the favor and they would have to admit, if not outwardly, inwardly, they will have to say, God is with you. So we experience God favors. We see it in deliverance. Whether it be of our unknown issue in our life. Our family. We see it in healings in our own body. In other people. We experience peace. A peace that passes all understanding. Listen to me. There's a lot that is happening in the world today. There's a lot that is happening in our land. There's a lot of talk about should and should not. Mandate, is it right, is it wrong? Listen to me. I will allow the peace of God. I will not become troubled by any of these things. I will not become troubled. I will allow my praises to go up to God. And God to give me his peace. I am not worried. I am not troubled. By the things that I should do. Or what I should not do. Should I or should I not. But the peace of God Amen. will keep my heart. Saints of God, do not allow, do not allow the world and what the world, world is implemented to divide you against each other. It's a matter of your choice. And we must respect each other's choice. It's not inherently wrong if you do, if you take it. Neither is it inherently wrong if you don't. It is personal choice. It is personal choice. You decide if you're going to take the risk with COVID or you're going to take the risk with the vaccine. Let every man be persuaded in his own heart. But it hurts me. And I believe it hurts God. When some of us. With our assertive personalities. We want to have our own way. And we want to bully people. And say you are wrong for doing this. Or you are wrong for doing that. No. Cut out the assertiveness. And respect people's choices. So the peace of God will come when we learn to praise God. So the favor of God, we see it in promotions. Worship God. You're on the job. There is an opening. There is room for upward mobility. Listen to me, man. Praise God. Praise God. 
while you're equipping yourself, while you're getting yourself together, while you, you're getting all the credentials for the job, the qualification, do not forget to praise God. I remember a brother in, the, in, in, in my former church. He gave a very inspiring testimony. He said he was walking in Mustique. And the job was winding down. And people were about to be laid off. And those who thought they were close to the bosses, the big guys, and if you see them, they're sucking up and they're doing all, all kind of thing. And he, in the eyes, just like what the Israelite says, like a grasshopper. He said, boy, do I stand a chance? Will I be the first to go? I remember my wife was giving me, there is some cartoon out of some a guy in a hole digging uh, digging his name is Dave Dave is digging 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 and all the bosses and supervisor on top looking down watching Dave is doing all the work you know? and then the CEO comes out and say boy times are hard enough some people will have to go guess who was the first to go Dave so sometimes the person that is doing the hardest work. Life is unfair sometimes. And the brother said that he went in the bushes in Mustique. Something like Prisa, something like that, I believe, something I think Prisa I see will do. He went in the bushes. And he began praising the Lord. And he said, God, it is you alone. That I have on my side. I have nobody else. And he began praying and praising God. He said a time came. He remained. Those who thought they were well secured. Were gone. He said man if you see here in the pool. Diving and swimming. Worship. <laughs> Listen to me. That is a favor of God. Some of us we are equipping ourselves educationally. And we are making ourselves more marketable. But listen to me. Do not forget God out of the equation. Because we are living in a real world. Where people can be very biased. That the people who deserve the jobs. Don't get it. The people who deserve to be promoted. They don't get it. Why? Because somebody else has ties. Or they, are, they have strings that can be pulled. Do not forget God out of the equation. When we begin to praise God, it shifts the focus. It shifts the focus. Rather than focusing on the problem, we begin to see the problem solver. When the children of Israel began to praise God, the Bible said that God set ambushments. The focus was shifted. They themselves did not see the problem anymore. When we begin to shift God, we learn to take our eyes of the situation. And we have so many situations in our lives. Some of us, we don't even tell others. But it's okay. Once we tell it to God. Once we tell it to God, it is okay. Saints of God, I want to encourage you today. Praise is comely. Praise is comely. Praise is what God desires from his people. Let us make it a habit. Let, let us make it a practice. That we should praise God. 
praise him. Praise him, praise him. When things are good, praise him. When things are bad, praise him. Praise him. You see, because when we understand, when we understand what it is to praise God, it would not matter when things are bad to us. Eh? We would not become poor me one, sulky, withdrawn. Listen to me. I believe that there are some people here, things are so bad with them. But because they praise God so much, you don't even see their problems. God is a faithful God. God is a faithful God. This, this one thing that I know, this one thing that I know, that God is a faithful God. I do not, it doesn't matter what I am going through. I know as long as I praise and I worship and I keep my eyes up on him, he will bring me through. And he will bring you through. He, it might not be when you want him to. But God, listen to me. The word of God says that the thoughts of God are higher than our thoughts. God is sovereign and God will walk in his own time at his own pace. We cannot force God. Matter of fact, the Bible says that who had given the Lord counsel? None of us can counsel God. We just do our part and God will do his part. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.